a very warm good morning to all of you. Uh, respected Sri Jijan E.K., today's uh, source person, Reverend Father Josie Vergis, Vice Chairman of Christian College of Engineering and Technology, Gilai, respected Vice Presidents, uh, Principals, and Teachers. Uh, warm greetings to all on the occasion of the World Environment Day, and also welcome to the second day of the pedagogical uh, training series organized by NGM uh, Group of Schools. Uh, it said a good teacher is a lifelong learner, and that's why uh, we have arranged uh, this pedagogical training series uh, similar to which we had last year. Today, our uh, respected resource person would uh, guide you to make the teaching of English more effective. Uh, he would be taking us uh, through the various skills and methods, as well as also uh, he would be uh, engaging us or helping us to impart techno technology uh, in a more effective way in our classrooms. Uh, to begin uh, today's proceedings, so I would uh, like to call upon Father uh, Josie Vergis for the welcome address. Thank you, Father uh, Joshi. Respected Father Joshi. Respected uh, Jigen, sir. My dear teachers and principals who have joined, a warm good morning to each one of you all. Glory be to the God for giving us this opportunity to come together and to go through the new technologies that can be applied to teach English language. As we all know that English is a global language which will help us to build each student professionally these students who have a bright career. And further, if you have the language with you, you can uh, go through many journals, you can go through many articles, you can understand and you can communicate also. So as an English teacher, we all have a great responsibility, not only to teach the students about the literature, prose and poetry, but also to teach them how to communicate uh, uh, outside the school or inside the school professionally where they stand they need to communicate to the society so that is a great responsibility bestowed on the teachers i still remember my teachers who have taught me the language the basics that they taught was from the right from the grammar basics they taught and because of those teachers i can stand anywhere and speak a few words so I do. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, give thanks to my English teachers, especially Teacher Patsy, Teacher Menezes. So uh, their contribution and their um, uh, their time, their love, their concern, whatever they showed to us, to each one of students, was of great importance. And um, today, when we are going through the series of effective pedagogical practices in English classrooms. Teachers, it is not easy to teach students inside the classroom. They are binding them inside the classroom. But we have to build an environment where the students will feel free to come out, to open up themselves, whatever their language proficiency they have. When they start speaking, they can. Uh, we can correct their language, we can correct their uh, grammar so that they can build upon them. So uh, this was only a sort of introduction from my side. Uh, I hope um, professor, Assistant Pro uh, professor uh, E.K. Jijan, Mr. E.K. Jijan will uh, throw more light on how to communicate with the students. Uh, for, uh, professor Jijan is more resourceful on these uh, topics. A word of welcome for our bishop. Um, I hope Thirmini will be joining a short while. A uh, word of welcome to our Thirmini, who is an educationist, philanthropist, and an environmentalist. Today is his day, World Environment Day, when we are celebrating. Uh, today is his day when uh, he is the most happiest person uh, to plant more trees and to see how the world and, uh, is responding to this day's concern. We have with us a resource person, uh, Mr. E.K. Jijan, assistant professor at Mount Tabor Beard College, Patnaburam. Sir has a, a 19 years 
uh, experience as teacher educator, five years teaching in school service. So was a former faculty in Kannur and Calicut University College of Teacher Education and also gave his experience in Dakshina Bharat Hindi Prachar Sabha B.A. College, Nileshwaram. He was also a teacher at St. Michael's Anglo-Indian Higher Secondary School, Kannur. Sir is having M.A. Masters in English and Sociology, then again M.Sc. in Psychology. He is having M.Phil and M.Ed. So he, have, he has a wide uh, knowledge experience is gained more from his teaching and his learning experiences. Sir is an able and gifted resource person for uh, educational technology, educational and uh, elementary uh, teaching, then educational psychology. He is an in-service resource person for school education. At this occasion, I would like to welcome Sir in our midst. Sir, please. I would like to also welcome our Diocesan Education Officer, Reverend Father Dr. Joshi Verges. He is an experienced face among us, very common to us, but a gifted person. Father is a ma ma macro manager of schools, very ably managing the schools, especially the teaching and academic side. Father, I would like to welcome you to this Amit's. Also, all the office bearers, technical team, and backstage brains behind the series of uh, this webinar, I would like to welcome each one of you all to our mission. Also, allow me to welcome the principals and vice presidents of MGM Group of Schools and uh, member institutions who are uh, taking part in this webinar. Also, the teachers, um, the teachers of our teaching fraternity who has uh, taken their time off during this vacation from the concern that Father Joshi has shown and the teachers have willingly um, taken off their time and uh, uh, came uh, prepared for this morning session. I welcome each one of you all for this webinar. Once again, a word of welcome to each one of you all and allow me to uh, take off. Actually, you have gone mute. Then it's on mute now. Uh, hello, Father. Hello, Father. Uh, am I audible to you? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, express my deep gratitude to um, the uh, Calcutta Diocese and the Diocese and Education Mission, most uh, uh, reverend his grace, uh, Dr. Joseph uh, uh, Divanesus Firmini and uh, reverend father Joshi Vagis and father George Vagis, the, the educational supervisor and the coordinator. Um, I uh, greet all the reverend fathers the respected principals and, and esteemed uh, teachers. Uh, just let me take a few seconds to present my screen, Father. Right? Am I audible enough? And yes. visible enough? Yes, yes. All right, all right. Yeah, I, I think it, the slide is, is seen, right? Yeah, it's visible. Um, yeah, I am happy it's, it's more than uh, 180 participants in the meet. And um, uh, I would like to have it as a kind of interactive section. Um, let's say, I know you are all very well experienced uh, uh, teachers and surprising. Uh, principles. Um, so let us. We, we are we are uh, talking about making the classes effective and interactive uh, in our uh, classes in the uh, elementary or secondary schools. 
so for kinding let us be in a classroom maybe where we we are uh, with the small children either of primary classes or of secondary classes so you know for more than one year we are not having a regular uh, real time classes i think uh, all over the world even in our in our states too and we are managing the educational process and activities uh, on in online mode with all its difficulties and issues so uh, this session we will mainly focus on um, making our classroom interactions uh, and curriculum uh, transaction more effective and productive as well as we also will discuss the time permits maybe in the second part of our, our session uh, maybe how to make our classes even effective on online maybe uh, utilizing some of the web resources or some of the uh, technologies available um, see again i think it's it's um, uh, what you call world environment day uh, so let us love the beautiful environment we are living in and try to protect our mother earth maybe for the future generation and also to nurture see when we uh, when we plant a small sapling or a seedling we take much care we we handle with uh, maybe uh, tenderly in the same manner let us let us nurture the tender minds who are interested to our mentorship and and get get shape um if if you have uh, if you have any any difficulties maybe with regard to uh, audio or maybe video please please interrupt me at any time uh, you are all welcome to interrupt me at any time no problem you can you can uh, i'll try to uh, meanwhile maybe check the chat box otherwise you can just uh, unmute your microphone and you can just uh, interfere okay all right you are all welcome to maybe to, to uh, contribute and also to raise questions all right so in the first part as i said now uh, so we'll more talk on um the, the real time classrooms um, the regular classes especially focusing on uh, english classrooms and you know we don't go much to uh, theories and and concepts uh, i i would like to yeah, maybe uh, share a few experiences or maybe to make some illustrations uh, small uh, what is it Uh, demonstrations if possible we have uh, watched in the beginning a video class work, uh, by one of my former students and that was a grammar class maybe i think she had dealt with maybe the structure relative pronoun i think okay so in classrooms we have we, have, we should have different types of lessons like maybe we have to pre, uh, teach them a, a, a cross passage maybe a cross lesson and uh, occasionally we have to teach poetry we have to handle a few classes if if needed maybe allotting a separate period for uh, dealing with uh, the language elements especially some grammar points and so on and we also should uh, we should also uh, uh, organize a few sessions where we make the children to uh, construct different discourses um, um written as well as uh, oral discourses okay and uh, as part of our uh, language teaching we also need to introduce and also expand the new vocabulary to our students okay it is in this context uh, see uh, if if you need i think i can share a few more videos i think that one uh, class focus mainly on teaching a uh, grammar uh, uh, grammatical point and maybe another video was shared i think to the father that is i think that is on a cross lesson right so um, when you look at the uh, curriculum that we have to transact in english with english classroom um whether it is um, the cbc uh, syllabus or it's a state board syllabus or what are the streams you follow see the the whole curriculum and the present approach of uh, transaction uh, uh, rise on certain uh, modern neuro linguistic neuropsychological principles and especially you know the contributions and influence of a few uh, psychological uh, theories like multiple indians theory as well as um, see um, um, what is the the social constructivist theory put forward by 
uh, live Vygotsky and so on. Okay. So when we uh, try to uh, transact English curriculum or language curriculum in general, is my slide, uh, slide seen to you? I think I find some difficult. Hello? Yes, sir. Am I audible to you? Yes, yes. Can you watch my, my presentation? Yes. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, Is it uh, visible to my presentation? Can you see uh, to stop the sitting? I think something happened because I, I saw on so my mind. Proceed it once again. Okay, all right, all right. Now, it's a prime time. Sometimes there may be some uh, unstable net uh, net issues. So, it, um, I'm, I'm sorry for the interruption, right? Some problem with the net. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I think it's 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 visible now, right? Right. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, and see, if you ask me, you see, what are the uh, what is called the character, uh, characteristics features of a good classroom in English, or what type of class you call as a good class? Um, I, I I would like to say, so they that class will have this this uh, characteristic features. It should be a learner-centered class. It should be activity-oriented class. It should be outcome-based. Uh, it's not visible to you, I think, Father. Hello. Uh, yes, yes. Is the screen seen? No. I request Tanusri. Tanusri, uh, please stop presenting your screen. Oh, I, I think it's the net issue. I think I have. Oh, anyway. The participants, you can uh, pin uh, the presentation of Vijay uh, uh, to your screen so that uh, even if someone else presents, it won't be disturbed. Would anyone see my presentation? No, no, sir. Yes, sir, we can see. No, sir, we can't see. If, if you are, if you are using see. mobile, if you are using mobile, kindly uh, select the people section and scroll down and see Jijen's uh, Delshin Academy and pin that. I, th I think I am having some issues. I think with regard to maybe uh, uh, the net. I'm sorry, sorry. The problem is with my net, I think.
Right. All right. Okay. Uh, I think now it's seen, right? Um, yes. So an English class, a language class, should be as maybe as a, uh, maybe other subjects too. It should be process oriented. It should be outcome based, and it should be learner oriented as well as activity centered. And as a language, definitely our classes should also be discourse based. That means it should enable our children to construct uh, various discourses in in English. And also the class should be multi skilled, and also it should be. Uh, it should be interactionist. It should follow a kind of uh, constructive interactionist approach. Or our classes should more, what's called, it should generate the, the target language, English itself. And uh, let's look at a few, a few, maybe a few concepts, um, uh, especially pertaining to our, uh, um, our uh, subject. Father, if a few seconds, limit it just leave for one or two seconds. Yes. Just one. Uh, I'm so. <laughs> hello, 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 teachers. I'm sorry, somebody called me, right? Is it okay? Yes. All right. Um, so, our classes should be uh, uh, process oriented more than product oriented. So, we should uh, introspect ourselves. What is our interest and concern? Do we focus more on the examination result? Maybe on the score the children uh, gain in the examination. So in a language classroom, do we focus more on their language development? Or maybe developing their competence, communication skills, and so on. And so <clears throat> then, as we know, all the classes should be outcome based. That means there should be certain results or outcomes from the part of the learners more than satisfying ourselves uh, with maybe completion of our our syllabus and also maybe uh, completing them in their curriculum and also maybe uh, conducting examinations and so on so they should think whether our children can speak and write english maybe at least to uh, maybe speak intelligibly and also to uh, write simple English, in, uh, uh, write in simple English. Uh, can they communicate in small life situations? So all the classes in a class and maybe in a language classroom should be uh, outcome based. Okay, I'm just uh, focusing a few points at the beginning. Then, you know, every subject, uh, see whether it is social science, or maybe in uh, in science, general science, physics, chemistry, biology, and so on, or in mathematics, they focus on uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe learning of certain facts or maybe developing certain competencies. For example, in mathematics, they focus more on acquiring the concepts and also maybe uh, the related number sense operations in mathematics or developing a kind of operation sense, computation and calculation skills, maybe measurement, geometry, probability or in statistics so this is what a mathematics teacher tries to uh, but what do you say uh, to focus in the maths class similarly in a language class the focus should be more on developing the competence language competence or what is the communication skills making our children to speak uh, maybe english maybe write simple english and also and also to read and listen english and comprehend it so that should be our primary focus in a language, uh, maybe a class. And next one, as we said, our classes should be 
learner oriented or what you say learner centric approach should be followed in, in class every class and we need to create such an environment or atmosphere they develop the competencies and skills so our classes should ensure what is a, uh, uh, a an environment that will promote language acquisition or language development of the children and that uh, what's called stress free environment uh, should be or psychologically conducive environment should be created by uh, every every teacher and in a class you know am i clear to you uh, hello yes sir you are audible yeah yeah um if you any difficulty please please uh, interfere and just uh, respond so in a class whether whatever the topic you handle or maybe the language activities that you uh, organize in the classroom let us try to uh, create such an environment psychologically uh, conducive environment a stress free environment where the children feel uh, like the teacher is one among them now we say a teacher should be a good teacher should be a co learner a good teacher should be a learner always so whatever we instruct to the children whatever the activities may be we give to children so let them have this feeling and let us create this kind of what is it we feeling uh, and our approach and and say for example uh, if when we want to make them maybe uh, to do something in the class maybe to have a group discussion or maybe uh, maybe a development of a small discourse in the classroom or they are going to reading a passage or recite a poem or whether they are going to role play something a conversation so let us always use our own language and i want you to read no let us say let us read let us read the story let us try to read the story and understand it let us recite the poem maybe uh, individually or maybe in, in small groups let us discuss and try to maybe write a small uh, write up prepare a write up so that should be the language we you should use in the class so that making the children uh, maybe a, a very what's called a child centered uh, maybe uh, um, environment um, uh, what's called a very um, stress free environment so it's only in that context i think every subject can, uh, that can be learned and a language should be uh, maybe uh, acquired so then we also took uh, talk our approach or our what is saying uh, our strategies should be more based on uh, experiential learning or we we talk about active learning active learning uh, we we don't want our student to be very passive learners in all the classes especially in language classrooms you know you know sometimes we can see some uh, some classes uh, maybe are uh, uh, maybe characterized by a very silent quiet class the teacher is uh, speaking all the time the teacher is presenting and students are uh, sitting very passive and quiet so that should not be the what is called uh, uh, the, the nature of an a language class an english class a la english class should always uh, should generate language english language or maybe definitely we may use uh, mother tongue in uh, maybe we may be using we may be going bilingual sometimes so in a language classroom the teacher as well as students should always use the language they should be exposed to that that target language say so, um, so experiential and actual learning is again uh, what i what we say a, a good quality of a good classroom and let us have this kind of participatory approach that means uh, let the children feel that they are learning along with the teacher um, and uh, see for example i think way of um, learning is to maybe uh, associate with our own experiences our own maybe what's called our own environment so let us draw examples and also maybe organize activities uh, maybe taken from our daily life observations so uh, whenever you may be presenting uh, maybe or introducing uh, a language concept maybe new words or maybe a grammar point or maybe some other literary uh, concepts let us try to draw examples maximum from the class itself or from their own uh, maybe the, the school background uh, 
let me just give, for example, you know, I need not tell all these things, I think, in detail because you are all teachers, but I'm just reciting, maybe uh, I'm bringing your, your kind of attention to a few, few uh, uh, ex examples. See, uh, for example, I, I think I believe strongly and I, I, I have experienced myself, most of the language elements, whether it is a new word or a phrase, idiom, or maybe a grammatical structure, I think they can be introduced using simple classroom situations. From their own uh, maybe uh, surroundings, their, their own life experiences. Uh, whether you are using some materials or making a kind of verbal situations. So let us look around the class itself. I, I think which can be, I think, brought to introduce the new concept, new vocabulary or new structure. Um, can you watch me other than watching the screen presentation? Can you watch me? Yes, sir. Yes, right. sir. See, for example, I'm just telling one of the examples what has just come to my mind and what it is very uh, near. See, for example, I am teaching them a small phrase in English, say, mount up. I think you may know the meaning of mount up. Mount up, mount up simply means to increase. You see, a science teacher demonstrates many things in the classroom, whether it's a chemistry teacher or a physics teacher. A social science teacher will definitely will make use of the globe, maybe atlas, the political map, and other devices. Language teacher also uses things. Maybe sometimes pictures, maybe charts. Sometimes maybe reality, there's certain objects. Sometimes we uh, you make use of maybe the, the technology, uh, maybe advanced uh, instructional materials. And say, if I'm teaching, the, the, new, the phrase or the vocabulary item, mount up, I, I can just bring maybe uh, if, if, if it is uh, possible, a small glass, it's a very mini glass, a small glass with me. What do you see in my hand? A glass, glass of water. What do you see in my hand? A glass, a glass of water. water. Yeah, it is uh, maybe half of uh, the glass. It's filled with water. And I, I have a few maybe pebbles, a, a few uh, maybe straws in my hand. I think you can see it, right? You see, you, you know, do, you do these things and you know these things, but I'm just uh, maybe uh, illustrating one example. So you can just ask the children to observe it, watch it, and maybe to watch the level of the water. And you can see maybe it's just a ha maybe uh, more than a half of the uh, glass. And I can drop, I just drop a few maybe pebbles or straws. And they can see the level of the water is maybe increasing. The level of water is increasing. Or you can see the, the level of the water mounts up when I drop a few uh, stones into it, right? See, a simple example. Or you can see anything, anything that is at your hand, you can make use of it. I have a, maybe a, a, paper, a piece of paper. I have a single piece of paper now. Maybe I, I, I can tear it into maybe pieces. Or again to the eight fold, maybe many, many pieces. You can see first I had only a single piece of my paper in my hand. Now you can see the number of papers have increased. So maybe something like that. Whether you, you teach maybe a vocabulary item, a word, or a phrase, even structures. I also believe that most of the structures can be with different, different techniques can be used. Am I going fast? Do you have any, uh, any issues, any problems in following me? No, sir. No, sir. Uh, this is no, sir. Is it no, okay? Sir. Are you comfortable? No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, good. Um, see, even structure, any structure, whether it's a tense form or maybe a sentence pattern or maybe a, 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 an expression of grammatical significance, you make use of it, you know, you we use inductive reasoning giving examples that go to generalizations, then go to maybe the, the grammar rules. Now, I was taught in the directive way. We were taught maybe certain English grammar items, maybe uh, uh, teaching as its rules first, but it's not the present approach or it is not the, uh, maybe, what is your, you call it, the better approach. You inductive directive reasoning, that is the best method of teaching uh, maybe a grammar uh, as, in, uh, as we teach mathematics. So whether you teach this, any grammatical points, you can uh, illustrate with classroom examples. You can, in the, you can inductive 
uh, use the use inductive reasoning, inductive method in presenting the grammar for say again for example. Uh, say what do you say? Um, as if, as though, as if, as though. It's a small uh, maybe phrase uh, with grammatical meaning. As if, as though. So you can make classroom situations, very classroom, uh, what is called uh, verbal situations. You can look at the one child and you can say, ah, see, look, uh, you see, look at Amel. Amel looks very happy. See, Amel sits in the class as if he's very happy. Maybe you can say, Sushma, Sushma speaks as if she, she knows well about it. Okay, I'm with, with, because of uh, time uh, limit, I'm just uh, citing only a few examples and the sentences. You can you can elaborate the situations, or you can say maybe Kishore walks as if he's drunk. So this way, we make a lot of examples. We use inductive reasoning, then go to teaching grammar. So this kind of participatory approach, that means you make the children involved in the classroom activity, not having just a one-way communication or the teacher being very active and students uh, remaining passive. So let the students be very active. Let us have a participatory class. That's one of the important, I think, feature of a good class, I, I will say. The class should be participatory. The teacher as well as students may be engaging in learning activities. and let them get involved in whatever they do, maybe in certain activities, games, maybe group discussions, maybe rearranging the seating, or maybe they are, see, they are seating, or maybe uh, reading, writing on the blackboard. You make the children uh, involved in all the learning activities. So this way you can make uh, our classes more active. The, if the teacher is active, no doubt, if the teacher is very active and vibrant, our learners also will naturally become active. So that is another uh, feature we should uh, we should consider and we should try to bring the classroom. Then, as I said earlier, you know, language doesn't exist, uh, i.e., and maybe isolated in word or sen uh, sentences. Language is always what sort of, it exists in meaningful uh, situations or what we call meaningful uh, discourses, not just as isolated sentences or words. Hence, we should. Uh, we should give them the linguistic experience and also uh, in, uh, uh, provide them expressions at the discourse level. So construction of discourses, that means this kind of meaning, creating meaningful discourses, whether it is oral discourse, just like uh, maybe a role play, a small conversation between two or three boys or uh, children, maybe uh, making a small open discussion in the classroom, making a, a, a group discussion or a pair group discussion in the classroom or having at times a small uh, open debate debate as well as making them to construct different discourses different discourses and that should suit the level of the uh, what called the students at the primary level we should select those discourses maybe simple discourses like what do you say uh, a small dialogue or maybe rhymes or small poems or maybe preparing a small uh, descriptive uh, paragraph, a small description, maybe showing them a small picture uh, or maybe uh, uh, presenting them a small chart or some schedule, something like that and uh, making a description or just narrating a story or narrating an event. So this kind of narration, description or dialogues that should be some of the discourse that we should uh, 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 maybe uh, construct at the primary level. Whereas we come to maybe the middle school or what do you say, the secondary level, we should focus more on a little more advanced discourses uh, like maybe construction of this, uh, conversations, riddles, or even maybe small stories or preparing uh, some notice or maybe a poster or a, preparing a small, what do you call, a report or writing a diary entry. So these should this should be the, so the these are some of the discourses that we should aim at the uh, what you call secondary stage. But again, when you come to senior secondary or higher secondary level, the discourses should be a little more advanced. Just like what you said, uh, maybe uh, as we said earlier, conducting a debate or maybe a, di a discussion, or maybe also making them to write a small scripts or organizing a small symposium or a seminar. So. Our classes should be 
discourse based as our curriculum is our curriculum most of our curriculum is discourse based curriculum and our classes and strategy should be also maybe aim at uh, maybe construction of the discourse um, and that is another uh, important thing that we have to remember then uh, i think if you can see the slide we should follow a kind of uh, what is your what is it an interactionist cognitive approach language is primarily for communication any any problem no sir are you with me yes yes, sir. yes sir. oh thank you thank you so much thank you very so interesting for yes very so we should promote maximum interactions in the classroom as i said a good language class should is should generate language generate language not just the teacher the students too and we should make our classes more interactive i think that's it. that is i think the the title of our uh, discourse itself making our classes interactive and effective and you know uh, there are uh, you know you can say that you have different types of interactions you have intra personal interactions that means when you read some material or you listen to somebody and you reflect to yourself you have you have kind of uh, intra personal interactions so right a kind of uh, interaction uh, with yourself and when you have interpersonal interactions i think uh, there are three types of interactions three types or you see uh, interactions at three levels i think you can say can somebody help me uh, what are these th different types of uh, interactions or uh, three types of interactions anybody i i know see you are all uh, uh, very beloved and respected teachers so for time being let us be in a small classroom okay being a teacher let us let us be also to be a small a small kid a small child in the classroom somebody can respond me which are the three uh, types of interactions one rena nelson is there are you there teacher miss you're, you're free and welcome to unmute your microphone uh, maybe uh, now and then and also you can respond somebody can respond but the three, three types of interaction three levels of interactions so what am i clear to you hello teachers i okay <laughs> all right all right um i see i i'm i'm sometimes conscious whether my net is becoming unstable and you are losing the connection all right see we have uh, what is your uh, the teacher people interaction interaction between the teacher and the people's children we have interaction between the learner and learner between students they have to interact they have to discuss they have to ask questions they have to share their ideas they have to answer the questions right and we also have the people material interaction the learning material whether the, the uh, english reader or what the workbook whatever you have so these three types of interaction should take place in a language classroom the teacher people 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 and learning a uh, learner material interactions and all our learning activities classroom activities should promote this interaction different types of interactions making the children to communicate in the in the language in english building conference step by step making small sentences correct maybe uh, maybe getting rid of their inhibitions in expressing themselves so promoting maximum interaction in the classroom that should be uh, again a feature of our uh, our english classroom or language classroom then okay this is the same thing related so let's try to give the maximum exposure to language if a child has to uh, acquire a language learn a language as we did in, uh, in 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 the case of mother tongue i think all of you are with me right yes sir yes sir yes sir okay okay yes sir thank you so much thank you so much yes sir so uh, we should give maximum exposure to language you know you know we, we know how we did we learn our mother tongue our first language our vernacular we were we were exposed much to that language basic principle okay even before we utter the speech the or uh, what do you call um, our, our speaking 
we listen to many body speaking to us we try to comprehend the language even we start uh, slowly to imitate them and utter small small sentences or words so we were exposed much to the uses of the language either our parents or maybe the family members the elders who are visited us who are try to maybe make some kind of uh, maybe um, interactions with us they all spoke to us and even before our formal learning formal learning before uh, maybe going to school similarly maximum exposure should be given to the children that not only the class teacher if it is okay let us give them certain opportunities to li listen to the speech of native speakers you make use of whatever you have maybe mobile phones maybe uh, maybe the tape recorder maybe tv maybe laptop whatever you have and giving more opportunities for listening and speaking and we should again promote all the first four skills listening speaking reading and writing say um again i have seen some of the teachers reading maybe english well giving maybe say no we, we try to give a more reading of of the text the, the specific or maybe the portions that we sell for a class children expect the teacher to read or give them a model reading to most of the classes if it is a above average class i think students are of maybe maybe above average um, maybe competence I think because you are you are more reading your situations, they can read well English and they can understand also and they can also pronounce well. And sometimes we when we teach uh, when we teach poetry, we need to recite the poem. So I humbly uh, I humbly remind all my fellow teachers, a poem is to be recited out to the children, not to be read out, not to be read out. So some with some kind of freedom, that piece of poem, the stanza should be recited out. Let them how let them receive that kind of auditory experience. You know, poetry teaching is entirely different from teaching a prose. Poem is to develop their power of imagination, developing their aesthetic sense. This is what we have all studied, right? So at least let them get some kind of good auditory experience. Let them listen to good recitation either by the teacher or maybe the audio played by the teacher. Similarly, I would like to say, we when we teach. The, the prose passages we have different maybe articles maybe narrations maybe a descriptive passage maybe maybe one act phrase so when you read read in the way that students comprehend at least 50 percent of the subject matter so we can make such a good reading good reading take some preparations exhibit very good reading the, in terms of speed maybe reading in sense groups in, uh, maybe giving them intelligible pronunciation. Okay, the, the normal speed, neither too fast nor too slow. So that good reading itself will convey, I believe, at least fifty percent of the idea of the passage. Similarly, when you have some narrations, when you when you teach them a, maybe a story, at least we will have some stories in our textbook. So when you Teach them a story, you know, if a poem is to be recited, a prose passage or a text is to be read out, how should a, a story, what should be a, sto a, a story is to be? What do you do with a story? Somebody? A story is to be narrated. Narrated. Exactly. Thank you. Your name, madam? Narrated is? story. Narrator story. Anupama. Ah, Anupama, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Definitely. You know, children like listening to stories, reading stories. So a story is to be narrated. That means definitely you make you make you make use of your textbook. But our reading should make them feel as if we are narrating the story directly to them. And they will uh, they will sit in the class with that much interest. Okay, these are some of the tips I would like to just share. So when you make reading or recitation or narration, or and at times you can have role play to follow different strategies and techniques in the classroom. You make them to write some conversations based on the passage, the text, and also make them to role play in maybe in the group of two or three. The teacher also can join. Okay, 
you just giving instructions and giving, keep, maybe standing aside and asking to do. You can join them. You can be one of the characters of the maybe the situations. So how uh, uh, happy the children will feel? Okay, okay, my dear children, I play this role, and you be okay. Let me, you do that. You read that. Maybe you play the role of maybe I don't know. You play the role of somebody, somebody, somebody. So this way, uh, let us give the children, provide the children more opportunities and uh, experience to the language. Okay, um, you kind of can you read? I mean, you may not be able to read. I don't know whether it is visible enough or not. Can you see the text there? Hello, can you can you see the yes, small text there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. 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 Yes, Am I clear to you? Yes, sir. yes, sir. You are clear. Sir, sir, suppose you are teaching, you are teaching them a prose passage. You are teaching whether it's a story or maybe an abstract for maybe a play or maybe an art, a science article, something, something, something. Uh, how do you how do you teach them that that text, that reading passage, so that maybe the selected passage, maybe for a period, for a day's class? You read definitely. You will be given reading, right? You're giving some explanations. You'll, yes, make, you'll be making some introduction, giving introduction. You'll be explaining some of the concepts or new words, something like that. No, and sometimes, do. what else you do? Sometimes we start uh, with general questions related to the ch uh, chapter in order to, uh, yes, like. Uh, so that they can uh, just have that glimpse of whatever they have uh, or the previous of the previous knowledge they have okay very good very good um, or and, with uh, some activity also sir with okay. certain activities that, that, okay very good uh, miss Gurpreet, right yes yes sir ah okay that, thank you so much right see um, if as a, you know when you make use of certain uh, skills like uh, maybe prompting or questioning skill as well as a, a, a good reading, as I said earlier, comprehension takes place. Okay. The boy who, who drew cats long, long ago in a small country village in Japan, there lived a poor farmer and his wife who were very good people. They had a number of children and found it very hard to feed them all. The elder son was strong enough when only 14 years old to help his father. And the little girl learned to help their mother almost as soon as they could walk. But the youngest child, a little boy, did not seem to be fit for hard work. He was very clever, cleverer than all his brothers and sisters. But he was quite weak and small. And people said, he could never grow very big. Okay, I stop here. See here, the comprehension is not difficult. If you give them a good reading, a good introduction, as she, Gurpreet uh, uh, Mang has said, maybe uh, uh, maybe post a, a few global questions, general questions, maybe to reflect and to respond. See here, what is the what is the essence of it? Okay, this is a simple passage. It's a story, you know. Maybe uh, not may not be suiting to maybe sec senior secondary level. It may be maybe a small story, maybe a passage for a middle school class. So you are asking maybe very prompting, probing questions, leading questions. We call them leading questions. We can make the children to comprehend and also to answer questions, comprehend the passage. So what's the title of the story? The boy who drew cats. Where did the story take place in Japan? What type of story was? Is it a Japanese folk tale? What's the story about a poor farmer and his family? Something like that, right? Who did help his father uh, in, in, in his farm, his elder, uh, elder son? Who did uh, help his mother 
sorry, uh, the, the mother of the mother of the family, maybe in Little. household work. Hello, you are saying something. Hello, are you okay? Yes, sir. We are able to hear you. Oh, all right. So this way, you know, asking very prompting, leading questions, we can make them simple, simple questions. We can we can make them to comprehend the passage. Okay, I'm just focusing uh, on making good reading as, as we, uh, or narration, narrating a story in the classroom. Um, are you okay? Are you are you comfortable? Are you or, or do you feel bored? Not at all, sir. No, sir. Very interesting. No, sir, not at all. No, sir, not at all. Okay, I said not you are that. so welcome to interrupt me at any time. You can ask any questions. You can tell me what should I speak about, or you, you, you can you can just maybe share your difficulty, or maybe uh, you, you can supplement too. No problem. No problem. All right. Um, uh, one Miss Rosie Singh is. Are you there, Rosie Singh? I I I just read a few names. That's from from your uh, your. Uh, maybe the participants list. Somebody, Tuma Joseph, are you there, madam? Yes, sir. Ah, yeah, thank you. Where are you from? Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh. Yes, I am in. Oh, okay, I think you can see the slide there. Maybe you can see uh, maybe uh, a few colors, maybe the, uh, different colors you can see, different uh, maybe. Uh, uh, words you can see, right? Can you read it? Yes, madam. See, okay, you know, it's a sim simple exercise, maybe just to maybe to have a change. So, if you can read, please read uh, maybe uh, from left to right. You read it uh, horizontally, left to right, not the word. You should read actually the color. You should read the color from left to right, not the word. Is it clear, ma'am? Yes, Rosy, ma'am, are you? Is it clear? Yeah, can you help me reading it? Hello, can somebody else? In anybody, anybody can read? Can read it if it's if it's to you. May I read? Like, may I read? May I read? May sir? I? Yeah, so Jada, ma'am, are you reading? Yes, yes, ah, I'm so. audible. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Yellow. Audible. From left to the right. Yellow. Blue, yeah. Blue. Orange. Black. Red. Green. Purple. Yellow. After that, it is not visible. Then orange. Green. Black. Blue. Red. Purple. Green. Blue. Orange. Actually, you read the words, right? May I read the words? Yes. May I read? Hello, may, may, I, may, I, Hello sir. may I May I read that? I want to read the word. I want to read the word. So may I try? Yes, 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 sir. May I read? I'm part of. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You read. Sir, you read. Yes, sir. May I read this chart? May I? Okay. Okay, my dear students. Now I'm going to teach in the class. So look at the chart and say the color, not the word, my dear not students. Okay, now yellow, blue, orange, black, red, green, purple, yellow, red, orange, green, black, green, red, purple, green, blue, orange. Your right brain tries to see the color. But your left brain insists on reading the word. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Sir, one more Thank time. Friend. I want to say that sunflower is yellow, the sky is blue, orange is orange, hair is black, the blood is red, the parrot is green, the bingel is purple, and the sunflower is yellow, and the hair and the teeth is white. In that way, we can express the colors to make it interesting to the children. Thank you. You, you are Sujada ma'am, right? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Right. See, that this is a small exercise. That means we, we have left and right brain, you know, hemisphere, left hemisphere and right hemisphere, you know, right? And actually, our right brain reads the color or say the color, whereas our left right brain 
read the word, word and sentences. Okay. Uh, see, I, 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 uh, I, I ask you to read not the word but the color it's like this. Say, uh, left to right. So may I? I pray. May I? May I? One more person. Last person. Last person. Last person. Black, red, blue, yes. yellow, black, red. blue, black, yes. red, yes. 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 Blue, yes. green, yes. black, that is right. red, yes. yellow, green, blue, black, blue, red, red. And yes. green. That is, that, is, that is what exactly. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Are you at your part? Part from is uh, what is the name? What what is your name? Rajni. Rajni. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Right. If you can see the next slide, look at this. What do you read here? You try to adopt various approaches and strategies in teaching. Diverse approaches for curriculum transaction. And try to use the effect. Minimal, right? I think normally, normally people, normally people. So for breakfast, I don't know what you will have there. Maybe you you may be having chapati and dal, something like that, or bread and maybe jam, butter, something like that. What do you have for with breakfast? It's just the fruit, sir. Sometimes, okay, so very very <laughs> conscious, very good. So you're having food, a baby fruits for your breakfast. Good then. Only nuts. Pardon? Nuts. Okay, you take the same uh, same food ev every day? No. Okay, sometimes you have you, no, know, you have different dish, right? I maybe know. for breakfast, yes. for you, for your lunch, or maybe even for your dinner, right? So here, yes. Here in South, here in South we buy different items, maybe different days. One day we have maybe what you say, a dosha. Some one day you have. Idli sambar. One day you have maybe. Chapati sambar, vegetables. Yeah, some some day maybe upma, something like a different different dishes. Yeah. See, we you know, we, try, we don't eat the same food. So maybe I for breakfast, or we don't have the same curry dishes for your lunch or your dinner. Similarly. Because you know, sometimes if you keep your taste, every day same thing. Suppose you are you are living single, maybe somebody living maybe in a rented house or maybe in a in a in, in a what to say, maybe in a hostel, uh, he or she cannot help but maybe to uh, depend on certain maybe ready-made food, maybe uh, trying some bread, buying um, some bread or jam or butter. See, every day if I I know one day Monday I take some some slices of bread. I apply some jam on it and, and, and I eat it. On Tuesday also I take uh, a few slices of bread, apply jam or maybe butter, consume it. Next day, on third day too, I take some jam, then apply on the bread, right? But see, what, how, how will I experience? Be bored. Feel bored. Sometimes I lose my, maybe the, uh, the, 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 the what's called the sensation of my face, but right? Yes. Similarly, children like variety, you know, they like variety. They want to have different stimulus. We say, we say stimulus variation is one of the important teacher skills. Make all possible changes in the stimulus that you provide as part of their learning experience. Maybe in terms of the strategies and techniques that you use, maybe in terms of the materials and teaching aids you are used. Maybe in terms of your interactional style that you use, we said earlier. Maybe making all possible changes, stimulus variations. Maybe in their sitting, sitting itself, whatever. If you have the academic freedom, definitely the, the teacher is the master of the class. And children like this variety. And try to use different strategies and, and techniques too. That is one point we have to remember. You see, there are so many. I I I know I need not mention one by one because you are familiar with many of the strategies and techniques that can be effectively used in the classroom. Sometimes you are having role play, sometimes you have some simulations activity, 
Sometimes you can have some kind of enacting, dramatizing, maybe sometimes you can have some kind of discussions in pair group or small groups. Sometimes you bring some newspaper cuttings or magazines and you have a discussion or maybe some work. Sometimes you, uh, you organize some games in the classroom, some language games, right? So this way you have, or sometimes as we said earlier, some debate, some discussions, some symposium, some seminar, one day you can conduct a small seminar in the classroom, even in your own simple, single classroom. So Quiz on the work. current issues as well, sir. Pardon, ma'am? Quiz on the current issues as well. Once again? Quiz, quiz, sir. Quiz. Quizzes, okay. Very good, very good, very good. Quizzes, puzzles, all those things you can give. Okay, very good. So go have different techniques and strategies in teaching vocabulary, in teaching grammar, in teach maybe in dealing with the, uh, maybe we have certain general procedure or maybe linguistic principles in teaching poetry or prose and so on. But even teaching vocabulary, you, you can have many, many, many different types of techniques in teaching vocabulary. So that's again, we have to think about. Then, see, for example, if you ask me, how, how do you, how to teach vocabulary? As I said earlier, you can use different strategies and techniques. Sometimes we give the synonym, sometimes we give the mother tongue equivalent, sometimes we make some verbal situation, sometimes we uh, mime and imitate and show them, introduce a new word. Sometimes I show them certain pictures. Sometimes I use a flashcard. Sometimes I show them maybe a video. You can have various techniques in introducing, uh, what do you say, uh, maybe vocabulary or other language elements. First and foremost, teaching them language elements like words, structures, phrases, and also developing their language skills. They are the main, uh, what do you say, objectives of uh, language classroom, language teaching. See, if I say, for example, if I'm teaching them, uh, a few words like sniff or yawn, sigh, weep. What technique should I use? Can somebody respond? I think if it's clear. If I, I if I am introducing, so it's small class, small class. Showing the actions, sir. Showing the actions. Exactly. That's the apt one. Yeah. If you need such words. So I do the same in the class. Exactly. Very good. Very good. So there we need not give the go for maybe it's mother tongue. We need not maybe go for it, maybe what's called explanations, definitions. You can have simple actions. You can just perform and show them. Sighing, yawn, so many, many, numerous words. See, again, I, what I would like to uh, share. We need not. We should not be teachers uh, who will be just transacting our curriculum and syllabus. Sometimes you have to break certain minds mindsets. You have a good teacher should always teach beyond the syllabus. You should go beyond the textbook. An English teacher is main aim is not to teaching them fact, uh, so many facts and maybe information in the textbook. Definitely facts and concepts are there, but we are not science teachers. Maybe teaching them so many facts and concepts. Our students should be able to write in the examinations correct answers, okay, right. Sometimes they should know the correct, maybe the, the, the meaning, maybe certain uh, concepts they should understand. Least linguistic as well as the literary concepts. But our aim is to develop more the language skills as well as also to expand their language competence by introducing uh, new language elements like the vocabulary and structure. So we should go, be, for, see, for example, what I say, when we should go beyond our syllabus or textbook, if I come across maybe a few uh, words in, in the passage, in the textbook, I hope you are with me. All of you are with me, right? Uh, yes, sir. Can you see the slide? What do you see there? 
What is he on the slide? Go beyond textbooks. Go beyond textbooks and syllabus. One smile and one he's just laughing. Children are very but happy. Emoji is there, very smiling, <laughs> laughing faces are there, right? Smiling and just laughing. But he seems to be happy there. Yeah. All are in a happy mood. All are in a happy mood. Very good. The little girl from Middle East, I think she that photograph is very famous for her smile, right? Happy environment. Okay, very good. See what I am saying. All were energetic. Children learn more things, so we are very happy. Are laughing. Back, some some background noise. Those who those who are having background noise can mute. They were very energetic. More words and more things, so we are very happy. <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good. See, what I want to uh, uh, say is, maybe if if I teach them a new word, maybe a, a vocabulary item like what say uh, giggle, giggle. Suppose giggle is a word in the passage that I I uh, uh, introduce or maybe a transact. You may know the meaning of giggle. What's giggle? Without any reason, laughing. Um, uh, not exactly, that sir. Uh, giggle is you know. It giggling, giggling. Laughing, laughing, laughing with the sound. Giggling. Laughing without, without any sound, but laughing, smiling. Oh, very excellent. Right, right. You are good. You are correct. You are yeah. Correct. See. Thank you. The children Thanks, already know laugh, smile. These words are very familiar to even small kids. Laugh, smile, and so on. But if I teach them, when I, when I introduce a word, say giggle or even uh, maybe uh, chuckle, so they are all the synonyms. If that's the word, I need not restrict. And, be, and and confine myself to just introducing that a particular word, giggle, and its spelling, its its pronunciation, its meaning. I can expand my children's vocabulary by relating or maybe giving more and more words. There are so many words which are which are very what's called related to that word. So laughing itself is of different types. Smiling again, you can have of different types. So uh, giggle means as 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 I have said. Laughing lightly, not loud. Yeah. And quickly, yes. you see, you know, I look at those small uh, girls. Look at the group of girls. They are giggling. That means they are repeating. Uh, you know, in in your mother tongue, you will have one word, right? In Malayalam, we call we say it maybe kurungi chirike. That means uh, they they uh, laugh very lightly and repeatedly in a silly manner, silly way. So what I want me uh, tell is, when I teach this word giggle. I can also tell children there are many more words. So at least remember a, a few more words like chuckle. Chuckle is another word where you laugh quietly and inwardly. Okay, you can see maybe some some children in the classroom maybe chuckle. That means they laugh inwardly, maybe hiding their 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 mouth or their face and maybe uh, looking inward and 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 they crack up. Or chortle, chortle is another word. Total means laugh in a very noise and gleeful way. Then many other words. Titter, a short, half suppressed laugh is called titter, titter tatter. So half suppressed uh, short laugh is called a titter. Or you know, snicker, snicker again, I think. Snicker, snigger. In a scornful way, you smile, you laugh, you make a half suppressed uh, maybe a, a, a laugh in a scornful way. So we have these various words. Laugh, smile, chortle, chuckle, giggle, teacher, snigger, snicker, so many words. At least let them remember two, three words. Chuckle or giggle. You get me what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Similarly, children are familiar with the word. Children, children know the meaning of the word wind, breeze, storm. Very good. They know. They know what is a, what a storm is. They know what is a breeze is. They know what is a wind is. But when you just uh, maybe introduce a new another word, maybe a related word, gust, G U S T, gust. Again, you can tell, okay, it is a strong storm. Or there are some other words too, like, you know, now, nowadays we talk about maybe hurricane and so on. Hurricane, tornado, tempest, typhoon. So many, many words are there. So when you teach one word, that means in the syllabus, we have one word to teach. In the glossary of the textbook, there is one word to teach. Maybe hurricane, but along with that, I am teaching them two, three more words, two more words. Maybe typhoon, maybe tempest, maybe twister, maybe tornado. Okay. Right? So this is how 
you go beyond your 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 text beyond your text see yeah, i think the advantage of an english teacher or language teacher is, teacher is that what not an english teacher bring and bring in a cl english classroom you can bring anything the science geography history mathematics maybe medicine an english teacher has the freedom that means you can you can bring anything under the sun to your classroom english classroom am i right or not yes absolutely sir. right absolutely. Sir. Yes, sir. So such, such just, you know, we are not here to teach them so many scientific facts and principles, equations, formula. No, we are here to teach them language, develop the language. But you can bring anything, maybe some concepts from science you can bring into the language, classroom, English classroom. You can bring some mathematical concepts into your English classroom, right? Besides the values and attitudes that you develop, right? For example, see. The science teacher, the biology teacher will definitely teach, teach them about sensations, sensory organs, and so on, right? The sensory experience. But in language, I think in somewhere I have seen in some uh, 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 chapter, the words related to our five sensory powers, sensory organs, sensations. No, that can be seen is called visual, right? Right? And that is that that is heard. You call it auditory, right? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. So you, if there is one word you can establish for the local children, so let us let the children be happy and let us be satisfied. At least my children in, in my whole class today, they have they have learned these five new words in English. The new the five apt words to express our our sensory powers, like visual, auditory, tactile. Then what do you call gestatory, then olfactory. Now these are the words. I think you are familiar with all these things. Okay, I'm just illustrating a few examples. That's all. So gestatory, maybe they know what is visual auditory. So let us add three more: tactile, olfactory, and gestatory. For me, for me, in my early days, I could not. I, I, it was always confusing for me: olfactory and gestatory. Are you with me, all of you? Yes, yes, sir. sir. Yeah. Because visual, auditory, even tactile, I could I could understand. But I was always confused with the gestate and olfactory. Right? The, 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 what's called the smell and the taste, right? You know, how did I remove that that, that confusion? You know, some kind of some kind of strategy, learning strategy we use, no? Some association, some mnemonic strategy. You know, we use, we use. So let our let our children also use some of the techniques. So and I always mistook one for other. So all factory that is the power of smelling, right? So what I did, I don't know. No, we the, the, we have the, the two nostrils, and the factory will have some kind of pipe. What's called this? But this kind of what you call chimney, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. So that is how I removed my confusion. And I made it pakka, right? Or factory means, uh, yeah, I have to maybe factories this this uh, uh, long, what do you call that? What do you call that? Pipe, something like that. So this is <laughs> just citing a few examples. Okay, right, let us leave. Again, let me just one or two more things just to add to this. Uh, in teaching of vocabulary, always I, I tell my children, focus on three aspects. Can you teach a small word or a phrase? If it's a simple word, I think you do not focus much on, emphasize much on its pronunciation. But if if the word is something, I think you if you feel that the pronunciation should be taught to them well, they should pronounce the word correctly. For example, uh, yawner, yawner, yawner. See, see the different pronunciation for the word. Garage, garage. But sometimes we call it garage. But garage is correct word. See, when we introduce a new word, what do you see? I say this three S. Remember this three S. What should I uh, focus, or what should my learner learn? More than teaching, in the learning is important. When a new word is taught, what should they learn about the word? Three S. I say one is shape, another is sound, and third is sense. You know these three are very clear. Can somebody help me? What do you mean by these three S? Shape, sound, and sense. Hello. Somebody can. Anju, madam, Anju Gupta, are you there? 
Yes. Ah. See, when you, when you teach them a new word, a new vocabulary item, I said they should teach them or our, our children should learn these three aspects of the word. One is sound, one is the shape, another is sense. What, the, what are these three? Uh, the... ah, sound means? Yeah, we have to uh, phonetics. Uh, pronunciation, uh, phonetics. Uh, then pronunciation, pronunciation with phonetics and with the uh, uh, with the. Uh, um. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And shape, shape means what? Shape of a word means what? Spelling, right? Spelling. Spelling of the it's word. It's a new word. Spelling I think they should spell it correctly. They should spell it correctly. So shape yeah. means spelling and sense means the meaning. Sense means the meaning. What is the meaning? Okay, very good. The context meaning or its literal meaning, whatever may be. The pronunciation, the spelling, and the meaning. So these are the three things that I think my child should learn. My learner should learn when I, a new word is introduced. Okay. So give them the experience. Maybe if it's required, if you need phonetic drill, when you teach them pronunciation, sometimes we have to give phonetic drill. You may be using uh, okay, I have some, a few flashcards here. You can make use of a flashcard. You can present them on the blackboard. You can present the word on the on a slide, whatever the medium you use. So if it's okay, if the pronunciation is to be taught, you use some kind of phonetic drill. And okay, I don't go to other details. I think it's clear to you. Uh, can somebody read the text? One of you, if you can read it. It is not visible. Anybody, if, for anybody, if it, phone and so on, I think you can zoom it. I think if, if it's not visible enough, you can zoom it. Sir, I will read. Sir, ah. I will read. Oh, yes. I, will read. I can also read. According to, according to a research at Cambridge University, it doesn't matter, matter in what order the letters in a would are, word, word are. Word are the only uh, important thing is that the yeah. first and the last letter be at the uh, right place. The uh, rest can be the rest can be a total uh, mess. Total mess. Total mess, and you can still read it. Uh, would without, uh, without problem. This is because the uh, because the human human does not find does not read every letter by itself itself but the word as a whole whole whole. If we know the if we know the word, we can read either either it is written wrong uh, wrong spelling also. It does not matter in yes. what order the letters in a word. Are the only important thing that the first and the last is in the right place. The oh, can you, be a total mess, and you can still read it without a problem. This yes. is because yes. the human mind does not read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. Thank you, thank you so much. You are Richa, madam. Richa, right? Yes, sir. What is your name? Richa, madam. What is your name? Yes, sir. What's your surname? Richard Tiwari, sir. Richard? Richard? Richard Tiwari, sir. I don't get, ma'am. Richard Tiwari, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. I, I think uh, the participants are from different states, I think, not only just from Madhya Pradesh, right? Uh, we are from Marble City. Yes, sir, from uh, yes yeah, myself from Rolkila, <laughs> MGM School. Are all from uh, Madhya Pradesh? No, 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 no different uh, 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 participants from Jharkhand, from Chhattisgarh, yes, from Jammu City, from Odisha, from Jharkhand, sir. Jharkhand, Odisha, Jharkhand. Okay, I am from Odisha, sir. I am from Odisha, Rotila. Can you use the? I am from. Can you use the chat box? Can you use the chat box? Yes. Hello? Yes, yes sir. You, okay. Um, I don't know where. I think I, I, I definitely I can understand. Some are from maybe uh, maybe uh, Central India, some from Northeast, some from maybe the West part. Uh, see, uh, if 
you are from uh, you if you are from uh, jharkhand if you are from jharkhand can you just text in the chat box me something like that me or i from jharkhand in the chat box <coughs> those who are from Jhar see if you are from jharkhand can you just uh, just to put me or the text me in chat box anybody Rurkala, Odisha, that's Anubama Madam, then Kumari Madam, Rajini Madam from, I think, Jharkhand. Right? Yes. Oh, okay, Bardi Singh from uh, MP, right? Sushma Madam from um, Jharkhand. Sedia Nuri Ma'am from uh, uh, Jharkhand, I think. Very good, very good. Anybody from Nagaland, Mizoram, that area, anybody? Nagaland, Mizoram. Azam? Sir, I am from MP. Jabal from MP? Yes, sir. Oh, Anu Anungla from Nagaland, right? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Happy. Good. Chattisgarh, that is Rajananda Ra, Gaur, right? Rakshi. Okay, right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, it's okay. Let us come back. Let us come back. Uh, I, I think I'm not going to explain too many things. I think now uh, just a few few points. So just to reflect and reflect. Uh, always we have different children, different types of children in our classroom, belonging to different socio-economic background, different uh, belonging to different ability levels, capabilities. Children with uh, maybe uh, differential, uh, differentiated or uh, differential abilities. Maybe some are dull, some are bright, some are average, and some are introverts, some are extroverts. And in a, in, a, in every classroom, not only language classroom, we should always consider these inclusive principles. But that's an important thing, uh, maybe uh, philosophical principles. I think here we, we are not here to maybe discuss and uh, talk too much. But if one of few things, we may find some children who may not be responding, answering to our questions. A few children who may not be doing the homework assignments properly. A few children who will keep very quiet and silent in whatever the activities we give, maybe small group discussion, small project we give, or some children who even are not willing and ready to even read properly. Don't you face such, such issues in the classroom? Don't you find such children in your classroom? Yes, we find, sir. Definitely. Some are very brilliant, very bright. Some are very slow. But they are not all bad. They are not all incapable of everything. They have some other skills in all these things. We, in psychology, we, you know, the important concept, individual differences are there, individual differences. Last day, I think we had the classes of Rosama teacher too. And what I want me here in our particular class, in a specific class, you sh we should ensure that no child is left out from participation in our activities. Am I making clear to you? Am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whatever the activities we have in the classroom, writing, reading, or discussion, whatever we have, make sure that no child is left out. Don't make only the good children, maybe that is smart children, to read every day in my class. Don't make don't ask questions to those children who I, I know that I'll get answer. Eh? Don't always make it same children maybe to write on the blackboard or to maybe clean the blackboard. You give even a few children because no child should in our class should feel neglected by my teacher. Just to think about that, that, that mindset of the boy or girl who always feel that, see, this teacher is neglecting me. This teacher even doesn't know my name at all. She's teaching for 10 months. She doesn't know it. And even being a class teacher or my, maybe my English teacher, she doesn't know my name. She never asked me a question the whole year. She never gave me an opportunity to read at least two sentences in English classroom. See, no child should feel, no child should have that kind of experience in the classroom. That's why I say you should ensure that. Each of your child, they, definitely their contributions are not equal. That's not the same. But ensure that no child is left out purposely 
but possibly by me from participating maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe answering the question maybe reading one may be very smart in reading very loud and very 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 very, very well and some child may not be even able to read at all he may be just looking at each individual word and trying so hard to read a sentence do i make any sense are you with me yes sir okay yes sir. yes sir so, so what we can do you know i don't know a few boys yes, are close, they can read well but i know there is one boy say for example one kumar i know kumar is not good at reading but i can make a, i can make kumar ah uh, kumar definitely you can read you can you can try reading the first sentence of the next paragraph just read one sentence okay when he reads with much difficulty one sentence we encourage them encourage encourage him okay very good very good so far so good can you read try one more one more sentence can you read one more sentence the participation and uh, output are different similarly even when you uh, make questions make questions you different use different strategies questioning strategies and you ask questions to even to a child who may be weak giving so much help give assistance give cues and cues hints and may and answer him and, and make him answer when he utters something he may be uttering only one one or two words i'm just talking about an ordinary class an average classroom and children not a what's called maybe a, a very 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 smart classroom so let us support him let us give some hints and make the child to answer at least in a few words when he gives the words he makes some attempts let us let us encourage the boy let us praise him okay you are done well you try to you, you try to answer the answer correct very good now you just listen to that other person thomas okay thomas can uh, repeat the answer once again so make us make the children to listen to the peer make make the children to utter some sentences write some sentences if you find some big children in your classroom so inclusiveness the principle inclusive is very important right next one is may you know, i know it is again a big area try to make use of simple simple resources teaching aids learning aids simple simple materials some objects some pictures some charts you don't bring everything to the classroom you cannot bring an elephant to the class but if you have some computer or maybe uh, some 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 display so i don't know if whether you have an uh, interactive board and so on if you have a small laptop or even a mobile phone or tablet you can show a small video of an elephant if the video is not available you can show them an image a picture of an elephant if even the picture is not available it's not at hand you can draw maybe an elephant on the blackboard right it is only last you should make the wearable wearable situations so the best way is to give the direct experience maximum direct experience so whatever the learning materials resources whether it is it's a standard learning materials like blackboard and chalk or whiteboard green board you are having different boards or you are having some pictures some objects maybe uh, maybe i don't know whether uh, maybe you are using tape recorder and so on or computer projector whatever you have so make use of maximum uh, instructional aids or resources they are all the resources for learning because they capture all the students attention and they can attract the children and also they can retain the information those visuals whether a video or a picture or maybe an audio maybe a poem a recitation of a poem that will be retained in their memory for long so try to use this multi media uh maybe resources whatever you can web resources or maybe the computer and so on or even standard resources not just a chalkboard and and chalk and textbook so that's again very important because that will help the children uh definitely to retain their in their memory and to also to grasp and also to form the correct concepts then you know you are practicing teachers i i don't know whether you make full fledged lesson plans at least make some teaching notes i think some schools i think they may demand this the supervisor or maybe the, the principal will demand you to keep 
teaching notes or lesson plans, lesson templates, whatever you call it. Even if it is not required, make some kind of small notes. You don't have the time to make a two, three pages lesson plans as the beer train is to do. You need not do. You make small teaching manual, a small teaching note, maybe half a page. Just specifying what is what are the learning outcomes I try to achieve this class. What are the different techniques and strategies I use in this class to teach this point? What are activities I can give the children? What are materials I can provide them or resources that I can use them? How can I get feedback? What feedback uh, scheme or mechanism I can use? Or maybe uh, what can, how can I make assessment? At least something, maybe half a sheet of a paper. Make a small, because preparation is very important. And writing this small teaching manual. What do you call it? Teaching manual, lesson plan, what do you call it there? Lesson plan. Have? Pardon? Lesson plan. Okay. Lesson plan. Lesson plan. Lesson plan. My dear friends, I'm not asking you to make a long lesson plan. Just to make small teaching notes, small small teaching notes or uh, templates, what do you call it? At least it's specifying the learning outcomes, the resources used, the activities selected, the discourse that you construct, maybe the strategies that you use because it gives parity to us. It makes us more resourceful. Okay. That's one thing I want just to share again. Then, with regard to medium of instructions, definitely the NEP and uh, what's called um, the national education policy, everything definitely they all tell that you can use mother tongue, make use of mother tongue. It's good, but you use of uh, make use of mother tongue judiciously, not translation. I can wherever it is necessary, I can give the mother tongue equivalent. Equivalent. I can use my vernacular. But reading and translating sentence by sentence or paragraph by paragraph and teaching every word and uh, maybe uh, phrases, giving them translation, that will make us to be a teacher of the 19th century because grammar translation method or bilingual method were used in the 19th century. But we are living in the 21st century. We have our mother tongue teacher, teaching the teacher who will be teaching Hindi or maybe other vernacular, or maybe Odisha or maybe Telugu or Marathi. I say it's not that you do not use, but use it duraciously and as far as possible. Try to use simple English language, simple English language. I have seen some teachers and even teacher trainees, they may be speaking and using only English in giving the idea or maybe transacting the subject matter, the content, the concept, or the important, uh, maybe the, 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 the idea in the, in, the, in the text, all in English. But when they give simple instructions, some common instructions, like, see, children, shall we sit in small groups? All of you stand up. Now, please, two benches, you sit face to face. All of you take your notebook and pen. And also, please open the page uh, 99 in your textbook. Who will come and help me to write the word on the blackboard? Okay, who, who will come forward to role play this conversation? I want two of you to role play this conversation. I want to discuss in the small group and make a list of five items. Are you with me? Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Giving such a common and general instructions, every child can understand. Whether whatever the medium, it is your mother tongue medium or English media classes, even small children, or even a little big children, they can understand these things. Okay, you can use your facial expressions, you can use your gestures. Huh. Okay, I want two of you to come and role play. Okay, I'll be we'll be having a role play now. I'll be there and I want two of you to join me. Who will come forward? To tell this thing, I need not tell in my mother tongue. That's my, my viewpoint. It's clear to you. Sir, if the ch children students are from the Hindi medium, then you can see you can judicially use Hindi, Hindi definitely. What? <laughs> eh? Zarur we can uh, give Zarur and Hindi. You uh, uh, can <laughs> Hindi may we can understand with our body language also. All right, all right. You know, communication is not just always verbally. Non-verbally, also you communicate. See, 
if you always teach them in hindi using too much hindi how can they learn english definitely they should learn hindi they should be good in hindi or maybe other mother tongue second language first language whatever maybe but if you go on using only that mother tongue hindi or whatever other language then definitely the, the process of learning or developing acquiring the second language english will it, it will be very slow so what i mean in giving simple instructions like this hello my children please open your book open your book look at the second paragraph on page number 11 don't your children understand this english you get me no sir yes, yes, sir. Sir. they can i think they, they can. can sometimes yes. first time they may not understand yes sir but you are telling you for a second day or the same thing you are the same instruction you are giving next day i think two three times if you tell the thing they know opening the textbook or cleaning the blackboard or role playing the conversation they understand it okay okay right right uh, then uh, this is this is these are some of the points i would like i i just wanted to uh, maybe uh, bring to your your uh kind uh, uh, understanding uh, and uh, what to say uh, practice how can we make our classes more interactive more effective using simple strategies simple simple thing okay again many many more things psychological aspects too i want to tell but the time is very limited always try to learn the name of your children name the children kishore would you please read or maybe shama can you can you write uh, two words maybe in the notebook or on the blackboard so when you utter their names they have the psychological feeling we see the child the child the teacher is caring is is very very uh, affectionate uh, has some care for me has some attention for me teacher knows my name okay first time next they may be first time they may be reluctant they may not be willing but if you just uh, maybe even if a mischievous child i say in putting in what comma no problem child no sorrow learner try not to use such words in the classroom okay problem child we put in in what comma but still if you find some children maybe uh, some children as problem children you engage them you just engage them give small task which they can do which you are very sure that they will do Maybe as I said, sir, uh, sir how they, to encourage them? Sir, how to encourage them to uh, come out from their uh, comfort zone? Like so, so many students are there from uh, like uh, they are using local languages. They are not using vocabulary. Even they know also. Thank you, Preeti teacher. Thank you, Preeti teacher. Definitely, they have so many inhibitions, so many, so many anxiety, anxiety, nervousness. fear of yeah. maybe fear of error fear of teacher fear of fear fear means oh, see if i make some mistakes if i don't don't read well what i my what my friends will think they have all these feelings but we can overcome these difficulties or i or i don't know english i don't understand english i cannot speak english my english is not good but we can overcome Bye. yeah by asking again and again uh, asking the question with those uh, student they know okay ma'am will ask me so maybe they can overcome oh, okay all right okay so uh, see we, different strategies we should be very tactful and the children should have the feeling they should have the feeling that see i can approach the teacher i can ask question to the teacher okay if i sir, one question to you sir one question to you how can we motivate motivate those children who are not taking at all interest in english subject yes yes that, that, that is the main point that? yes how can yes, we encourage them like how, how can we motivate them sir what is like the correct uh, technique to motivate I across those so who are not taking at all interest in english because I they are speaking so bhojpuri at home they are speaking yes. bhojpuri at home very good very good very good thank you for the question see we, we trying to explaining or making them maybe to, uh, maybe uh, uh, um, understand the importance of english i think they are all in vain i think what they can do definitely many children will be they will be sitting with a different minds without much readiness without much interest in our classroom 
they may not like the subject you have to teach. Subject means the language we teach. A few things, one or two things, what I can tell. See, that's again a psychologically um, a, a truth. If the children like the teacher, if they, they love me, they will startly, they, they will slowly start to develop interest in the subject I teach. Very well said, sir. Very well said. That's a, that's a very, very important fact. Suppose you just, I am not telling about you. Suppose that there is one English teacher, a male or female teacher, teaching them fourth standard, fifth standard, seventh standard. And all these years, three years, he was teaching me English. And that very, that sorry is not at all approachable. Sar is not friendly at all. Sar is not present in the classroom. Sar is not smiling at me. Sar is not teaching me well. Sar has no care and attention for us, no affection for us. So these feelings will make me to develop a kind of aversion towards that subject, a kind of dislike towards that subject. I don't like that sir because and that, that sir punishes me, he canes he canes me, or sometimes he scolds me. So I don't like the particular teacher, so I will never like his subject too. Then in the when the child comes to seventh standard, eighth standard, you are there coming as a new English teacher. Okay? Till now, the child did not have, did not like the subject at all, English at all. He didn't want to learn English at all. For just the sake of writing examination, he writes something. Sometimes he passes out. And now a new teacher comes here. Your approach is entirely different. You are so friendly, so approachable, so caring. And your way of teaching is also very attractive, interesting, telling stories, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and organizing certain activities. Interesting activities, sometimes games, sometimes puzzles. The whole approach strategies are different. And again, this particular child, maybe Ram, Ram. See, if I ask questions, he doesn't answer. When I ask him to read, he doesn't read. When I ask him to um, what to say, uh, uh, go with some other children in the group, he doesn't contribute at all. He sits there as a quiet learner, a silent learner. There you just to give them small, small support. We say scaffolding, facilitation, small. Okay, Ram, what happened? Where's your notebook? You don't bring your notebook, no problem. But next day you bring it. Now just to, just to listen to them, eh, talk something. Gradually, not in a single day. And when he does something, that I said, see, for example, Ram doesn't write anything. He doesn't know how to write even a good sentence at all. But you can make the Ram. Ram now you, there is something on the blackboard. You are written something on the blackboard for the class. At the end of the class, you deliberately call out Ram. Ram will be will not be willing first. Ram, please come. Will you come here? He he will. You know, he he doesn't mind at all. But when you just tell very friendly, sometimes he may stand up from his seat. He'll come forward. Please, can you can you please clean this blackboard for me? Can you clean it? I, I go to see it. You are not making children to work for you. It is your duty to uh, clean the board, to bring the chalk piece to the classroom. But I am telling to make the child engaged in my classroom. I am making to behave in a particular manner. Ram, would you please clean for me? You just look, look at him, smile at him, uh, have, give him a good smile. Please clean the board. Just see, he cleans it. After cleaning, you tell, ah, thank you so much, Ram. Thank you so much. You just say one thanks to sign. Next day, his attitude changes a little bit. Next day, also come you again. Not uh, he, Ram should not feel like that, but still, when you give some activities, you just say, uh, Ram, can you try to answer this question? He doesn't answer. You make maybe Venu to answer the question. Venu will be giving answer very fast. Are you with me? Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Very well. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Noted all the points. Yes. Noted all the points. Now, Venu is a smart boy. Venu is a smart boy. He knows the answer. He can read English. He can find the answer for textbook passage. Now, Venu gives the answer. And this poor Ram is standing there idle. Because he does not know how to find the answer for the par paragraph. He does not know how to uh, maybe make into a sentence. But you just to, don't scold him. Uh, be, you fool, sit down. Don't never say. I am not meaning that you are telling it. But there were some teachers, you know, all the times. 
I have seen some teachers when I was a school a schooler, a, a, a boy in the school. Okay, now when you give this answer, try make makes an attempt. Now again, you look at with a very con, 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 concerned and smiling face to the to, to Ram and you say, Ram, did you listen to the uh, Venu? Actually, he may not have listened. Then you can say, Venu, can you repeat once again this question? When once again this sentence, small sentence, don't make them to utter long sentences. Venu, can you uh, repeat the sentence? That sentence, that answer for Ram, Venu repeats. Now with half mind, Ram listens to Venu and the teacher. Okay, now Venu, very good. Now can you try to say the sentence? Can you give the answer? Can you just name the word? At least one word. Now Ram slowly after his opens his mouth. He speaks a few words, not long sentences. Again, you give him some reinforcement. We say in, in psychology, you know, you are learned. Ah, Ram, very good, very good, Ram. Very good. Two, three days, if you practice this one, I am sure Ram's attitude will change. Because he has seen that former teacher, even know, not knowing his name, the teacher never called his name, never smiled at him. So I have a question towards the language, not the teacher, but a version towards the subject, English language itself. Now with the with your new approach, new teacher, Ram slowly develops a kind of love, love. I tell my children, and I even practice. Okay. Some children, if you look at their books, you can see even no cover page, eh, no wrap, even not a first page, everything's half eaten. You tell them, children, do you like English? Some children say, like, like, okay, we like. Some children, not at all. Okay, sometimes you see, if you find a small picture, something, you get a good gift from a friend. What do you do? Even you give kiss. Okay, I'm not telling literally to follow. If you, if you, you slowly, okay, if you love English, what do you do? You give a kiss to your book. Give a kiss to your book. So the love that a child gradually develops for the teacher will reflect in developing an interest for English classroom and English, English language. Is it clear to you? Yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. I, I can tell many, 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 many strategies, small, small tricks. I say not wrong method. You don't go for big, big methods. A successful teacher uses simple tricks in the classroom, simple strategies and techniques. That is what makes your class effective. Use simple tricks. Just like children should feel a kind of game, not English class is not the grammar class, poetry class. Don't frighten them. Don't frighten them. I say even if you're teaching a grammar point, don't tell them I am going to teach grammar today. Or you are <laughs> you are we are going to learn grammar today. I say don't use at all. Okay, children, let us learn today a, 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 a new item, maybe something, say something like that, a new expressions. Okay, because some children, again, doesn't, they, doesn't like grammar class, doesn't like English class, poetry class. So this gradually you can change. Again, I say two, three things you say. Participate, involve the children, involve the children. Name the child, name the child. Encourage the child, encourage the child. Whatever the utterances that he makes. See, you give them a small homework. I know it is going to be 12 o'clock. Um, I'll try to conclude very fast. You give them a small homework. Maybe answering questions to three questions, answering three questions. Maybe uh, researching and finding some names, and making a small list, list of five items. Small, small tasks. Don't give big tasks. Small, small assignments. And again, suppose, as you said, some of your children, not complete, homework not done or partially done. And there comes the RAM again. RAM, if you are given five questions, or you wanted your children to write five items, RAM has written only two questions, only an two answers. Two answers, or even just one answer. So I can approach like this. Oh, what RAM? You did only two questions? You attempted only two questions? Where are the other three answers? You can you can you can react like this. You can also react in a different way. Ah, Ram, you very good, very good, Ram. You wrote two answers. Well done, Ram. Let me look at let me let me look at it. 
Ah, the first one. Okay, it's very good. It's correct. Second one, ah, not complete, but some idea is there. Okay, very good. Very good. You wrote two answer. Very good, Ram. If you want, you can write two more answers. No problem. You are a very good boy. Hmm? You are, I know you are very smart. If you if you if you try, you can write one more answer. No problem. You, you wrote two answer. Very good, very good. Put a tick mark. Appreciate. Clap. Smile at the boy. Instead of scolding for not what he has done, what he has not done. Do you get me what I mean? Hello? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate the child. Appreciate the child for what he has done. Because that is something great for him. Instead of scolding him for not what he has not completed. See, different small, small tactics like this. I think you can follow. Students' attitude change. That's very important. If I don't love that subject at all, I, it's very difficult for me to learn. That's what I said in the beginning. Making our classroom environment so friendly, conducive, suitable. I am a teacher. Definitely, you be a teacher. But you, you have to go down to the level of the students. You can see some of the good video, video classes and so on. You can see how the teacher interacts and behaves in the classroom. I have visited a few European countries. I have gone to the classes. I have seen the teacher, especially in the elementary classes. The, the teacher is one among the children. The teacher plays with the children, acts like, the, like a child. Gems, I have seen uh, kindergarten, primary classes, the teacher is behaving just like a kid, one among them. If we want, to see, that, if we want to see uh, any uh, more changes in the students, so we have to also change in our attitude, in our teaching. Exactly. Myself. Yeah. Exactly. Correct, 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 correct. Don't think that, see, I have prepared my lesson and I am here to maybe present my English class or chemistry class and I don't bend at all. <laughs> I, I, I don't have any facial expression at all. See, they are all for communications. Nothing will happen if you if you thank the child. We expect our children to respect us. We expect our children to love us. So, May, so let us let us have some love and respect for children. Definitely, the, their attitudes will gradually change. But I assure, still there will be a few students who may be again very difficult to come to the mainstream. You should take some uh, special attention, some individual care. You should give, like this. Okay, when the child feels that, see, this teacher is, uh, teacher is very what you call uh, maybe uh, 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 noticing me, uh, has some care for me. And some children may be making some problems, maybe, maybe uh, some may be making noises and so on. You not cane, you not beat them, but you can, even a small look can make the child, their attitude change. Okay, I'm just leaving these sides. Then uh, it is it is 12 o'clock now. Um, I don't know how much time is left more. Um, uh, second part, I wanted actually, um, if, I don't know. It is from only from your reflections and responses that I can understand and I, I can present something. Uh, you are having online classes, I think. Some states you are having online classes now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think you are going to start a resume, maybe in the new academic year after some time, maybe after a few weeks or months? Yes, sir. From this yes, mid month. Sir. Okay, how do you manage your online classes? I think, anyway, we are not, the teachers as the students are not able to go to the classrooms and have classes. We are managing. How do you manage it there? So we are sharing make slides, it, make it uh, more interactive and like uh, making PPT and all. You prepare PPT and send by what uh, uh, mode, through, WhatsApp or maybe... Uh, so, so through online, sir. Uh, through online. You are having Google Meet or Zoom meeting and so on? Yes, Google sir. Meet, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Google, Google. Google, Google Classroom, Google Classroom, classroom sir. Uh, is there anybody who doesn't uh, maybe... Uh, make use of this uh, live, that means virtual uh, live classes like Google Meet or Zoom Meet. Uh, but yes. rather you may be using WhatsApp group or some instant chats and so on materials. Do you have such classes? Yes, sir. From yes, sir. We are, both using, we are both using Google Classroom and WhatsApp, sir. You are using both. Yes, for the sir. primary session, sir, and uh, so for them, uh, we have to send videos and all in the through WhatsApp. Very good. Um, okay, so you, you create some video of yourself and you edit it and you just uh, you send to the children? Yes, They're more, more uh, animated also, sir. 
uh, are you downloading and use uh, maybe using net resources like youtube or you are you, do you create your own video uh, sir sometimes so sometimes uh, uh, create, uh, create uh, uh, own uh, and, uh, and uh, oh. taking ideas from the google also sir very good very good very good very good what all resources you can use use it see what i say i mean see uh, you can have two ways one is to have uh, this live video conferencing tool and so on then interact with the children and second is to uh, use instant chats and other social media maybe to share the material we call them e content in the in form of video or maybe interactive slide or maybe some audio clip uh, animation picture and so on i think you, you may be using both yes sir uh, see suppose you you prepare a slide a powerpoint a very attractive powerpoint so what i my humble suggestion is to whatever material you develop and you uh, deliver you you share with with your children let it be very brief because if you are if you are creating a long video for 20 minutes they may not be able to download and watch it no no to no, make sir, it very brief to- Two, three yeah. minutes, four minutes, two minutes. Yes, sir. We right. have to cover. We have to cover it within a five minutes only, sir. Because that, that's 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 that's, that's not preferable. Right. 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 Very good. Then, if you are making an a uh, PowerPoint, definitely make it more interactive. Interactive PowerPoints. Yes, sir. Sometimes you can we share. Usually, we usually we um, usually record our voice also, sir, and that PPT and all. So, uh, you screen record maybe your presentation and you you make it video and send them. Yes, sir. No, I will. Screen recording means suppose. See, I can screen record what I am presenting now. Yes, sir. Sometimes we no, have no. to do the same thing also, sir. Okay. What 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 all softwares or applications do you use? Uh, sir, through mobile only, sir. Uh, we mobile. record and we just send it, sir. Yeah, mo- mobile also many applications are like InShot, Kind Master, Viva yes, Video. Yes, sir. InShot, Kind Master, InShot. Video, uh, Video Show. Yes, recorder. sir flora oh very good very good very good i think i, I hope many, some of you at least make it right yes sir sir in this pandemic sir we learned so many things through technically oh, very, sir <laughs> very good very good do you mark attendance in the classroom in the google classroom sorry sir come yes, again you that is you so maybe take by hand or you you have that that uh, add on attendance google <laughs> form Google form. Google form on hand. So we maintain the uh, in register also, sir. Manually also, as well as the uh, in uh, Google Sheet also, sir. Yeah. Both. 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 Because we have to tell you know at the end of the sessions we have to tell you. So we have to uh, maintain in both. Okay. 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 Ah, uh, so at least I I require I think half an hour maybe if I to just display and show them or maybe. Uh, maybe introduce certain applications. Um, there are so many resources, but the time is too short. Uh, I I don't know if it's required. I think you you just uh, think about another day or organize it, which I can help. Otherwise, uh, I don't know how much time is left out. If if you have any questions, any practical difficulties, any issues or something you want share or something you tell me, just interact. You are welcome to even unmute your video and you can you can just uh, uh, you can share. I don't know. It is it is five minutes past twelve o'clock. Call five. How many minutes you 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 have here? I don't know. Shall, shall we wind up? Shall we wind up? They can ask the question now. Now uh, 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 they can they can they can. Oh yeah, you can you can you can you can raise raise. So just want to ask learning strategies and learning styles. Both are same, or there is a some differences. Learning strategies and learning styles. The difference. The difference. Yeah. There is a slight difference, or both are same. Learning. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Your training yeah. is right. Training is right. Yeah. See, we have See, been we talking, have been... Uh, discussing uh, about different strategies that can be used in uh, in general as well as in language classroom or English classroom. For I think till I now. Think till now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. yes. Depending, yes. On, Depending the on the subject or the curriculum that you are trying to transact, use use the most the appropriate most strategies. strategies. Yes. Yes. And learning and styles means, 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 you know, you know, uh, you ask you how you have different different. Is there any answer there now? There now? Hello. Sir, your voice is echo. Echoing because somebody is, I think, microphone is on. That's why I think. 
Now it's okay. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, right. Um, see, different teachers follow different instruction styles or teaching styles. Okay, I have my own styles of presenting or my own style of uh, teaching. Another teacher will have his own her own style. Similarly, learners will have also have different styles of learning. For example, you know th there are many theories and concepts uh, uh, maybe related to it. There is walk styles of learning. Walk styles you may be familiar. I don't know. You may be familiar. At least some of you. B B A K walk styles means visual, auditory, kinesthetic. That means some theories tell that. We have visual learners, we have kinesthetic learners, we have auditory learners, learners. That means some children prefer to discuss with their peer, their companions, ask questions to teacher, get some kind of auditory experience. And that is the most preferred learning style of that particular child. So that child will be benefiting more when the teacher is presenting something, speaking something, or maybe reciting, or when the children are engaging in group discussion or role play, this auditory learner will be learning better. It doesn't mean that he doesn't uh, watch or see and learn. He says, see, sees, but the main learning style is auditory. Whereas some children, you know, they don't go for groups, group study and uh, discussions. They don't ask many questions in the classroom, but they go on reading the material, maybe uh, referring some other resources, watching maybe some video, and they, they are visual learners. For them, if you present them a chart or a picture, or you show them a visual, a video, they will comprehend better. And using of map, chart, diagram, such things, whatever you can display. When you use such techniques and strategies in the classroom, this visual learner will be learning better or maybe benefiting better. And some children who are kinesthetic learners, who prefer more by doing themselves. You know, you say learning by doing. We say what is a activity oriented learning style. The children, they you know, they follow their own whims and fancies, not others. They don't listen to others, but they, they try out. In doing a mathematic problem, they make an attempt, they make tryouts. And last, they, they overcome the errors and they solve the problem. So they are more kinesthetic learners, that means those who, those who uh, learn by doing the things, getting hands on experience. For them, if you involve in the activities, like maybe role play or maybe some other task where they can engage more. So these kinesthetic learners, where they get hands-on experience, direct experience, they will be learning better. Uh, Shiny Miss, is it what did I ask me? Ask me. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. So, so I have a good I teacher. Have... As we said, we have different types of children in our classroom. And again, the theory of multiple is very, very, very important. All the children have these different intelligences. We also have. We also have. But we have different profiles of intelligences. Some are linguistic intelligences. They are, they are, they are more, or what you call, they are prominent linguistic or verbal intelligence. Some are maybe very good in uh, kinesthetic intelligence. Similarly, a teacher should follow and adopt different strategies and techniques and media, media to capture different types of learners. If I go on explaining and reading and questioning and speaking, this may be more beneficial only to the verbal, what is called auditory learners. But when I make use of some displays, when I give some visual experience, maybe a video clip or chart or diagrams, attractive slides, this will also will capture the visual learners. And some children, when I engage them more in activities, make them more participatory in the activities organized. That will be more beneficial to the kinesthetic learners. So a teacher should always try all this. That means all our strategies and techniques and methods and resources or materials that we use should capture all the children, all the children. Is it okay? 
Hello? Yes, sir. Ah, yeah. yeah, next next question. Anything else? all these strategies we can do when uh, when we go for for offline classes now right sir but when we go for offline offline classes but sometimes also something can be even on online too definitely because last one year i have been training my my students to making the online online classes more interactive and participatory and they use so many so many these are some of the examples there's no time that's why these are all the tricks my children use for teaching school children. So, so many resources are available. At least easy, simple ones can be used. Like you can use some interactive web tools, like a near part, uh, what do you call um, uh, H5, H5P, or what do you call Padlet, Jamboard, Canvas, online. See, online, we don't have blackboard, but we can use a whiteboard, or we can we call it what do you call a digital board. One example is Jamboard in Google account. You know, when you open Google Meet, you just uh, you know, go, uh, drop down your this one. You can see there, there's a Jamboard. You open one Jambo, Jamboard, there you can draw something or you can add a text or some labels, some sticky notes, some symbols. You can use it. And Canvas is another digital board, whiteboard. Canvas. Canvas. Dot apps. Uh, canvas.apps.chrome that is the site i repeat once again canvas.apps.chrome you can try yourself since there is no time i am not demonstrating it here canvas.apps.chrome okay so that, that is another whiteboard where you can use in online classroom in your google meet jamboard is one whiteboard that you can use in google classroom you can make some interactions feedbacks so let's say you are presenting something for 10 minutes, then you want to check whether they have comprehended anything, they are attentive or not. Use simple, simple uh, Google form is one, you know it. Quizzes, quizzes is another, Qzis. Some of you know it, Q U I double Z I Z, quizzes.com. Just visit and try yourself, you, those, who, those who are unfamiliar with it. Sure, sir. You know it? No, sir. Ah. I, I didn't heard this. That's why I asked right now. Since we don't have time, I don't know. Should, should I present something? Father? Okay. Uh, quizzes. How much, how much right? more time uh, it would take, sir? Father? If you The presentation, how much time uh, it takes more? I, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I, either we can wind up or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So there are uh, there are few students. Their understanding skills is, are good. They are good orator, good reader. They are keen observer and very active. But these types of the, there are few students, but they don't want to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, how, how to how to motivate these types of students? Those who won't, don't want to write, but in other aspects they are very good. Chinese, 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 yeah, yeah. There are there are few students, their understanding skills are good. They are good orator, good reader, they are they are keen observer, very active. But these there are few students, they don't want to write. How to motivate these types of students? How to motivate? So there, so there, is there any strategy or is there any special style to teach uh, to motivate these types of students? Those they don't write they don't at, write at, at all. all. They yeah. don't write at all. Yeah. Lack of interest in writing part. Their writing part is not interested in writing. Is it, is, 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 is it in the class in the classroom or outside the class? In class. Uh, in, uh, in the class. You are going. going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, sir, your thing, voice is echoing, sir. No, because I, I, her voice was not audible enough, so I was using headphone in the mobile. Okay, right. So I will, is it okay now? Yeah, sir. Now it's okay. All right, all right. Um, see, um, it, writing again is an important area or skill that we should develop. Our child should be able to, as we said earlier, they should be able to make simple, simple discourses in English. 
maybe a small writer preparing a write up maybe writing a small diary entry maybe in life they may need you to make an uh, prepare an application or maybe answer the question in the examinations these are all uh, important uh, inevitable part of our uh, maybe uh, classroom activities but first of all uh, one or two things i would like i can suggest uh, as uh, shaini has said one sometimes we find the teachers fail to give clear cut instructions in the classroom i have observed many times children and uh, children are sitting with the different moods and rushed so you make them to uh, write something do some task make the instructions very clear very clear very specific i have been visiting to my certain classes and maybe in the schools and i see i, I used to sit with my uh, with the school children in the last bench of the class and something some activities going on in the class and at times i just to call the boy sitting near to me and ask so what is going on actually what are you doing now what is, what did the teacher ask you to do now what is the task given the boy just uh, uh, points at the other boy calls what is this what is given he doesn't know the other boy is also keep <laughs> what to say so only few students follow what the instruction is given by the teacher so let the instruction be very clear you can for say example dear children so we have 10 more minutes now shall we uh, sit in pair okay just uh, uh, discuss with your friend maybe your your companion there okay just look at the table or the picture you just write three sentences just write three sentences don't make them to write long paragraphs so many sentences don't expect i say especially to overcome this kind of uh, what's called inhibitions or uh, unwillingness on the part of the learners you give them simple task which can be done by the children so give the very specific instructions okay that too always i said the language is very important okay do it you do it you do it Don't, never use you 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 always use let us let us try let us discuss let us look at the picture there is a picture here beautiful scenery look at this one let us describe this okay you can see what are things you can see in the picture you can see there's a house you can say beautiful maybe a, a small stream flowing there you can see maybe a, a housewife maybe doing some work there see some you are describing the picture the scene orally first because that is an important linguistic principle any exercise that is then written should be preceded by oral exercise because anything that you make them to write that should be orally drilled that's a very basic principle of language learning whatever you make them write you orally drill it okay these are things so you describe the picture with the help of the some students make a small small sentences maybe bring out a certain ideas observations then you tell them okay shall you write now it's clear the picture is clear you have seen what are things are seen on the picture you know what does a girl do you know which animal is present there now just to write three sentences five sentences so that feeling the teachers instruction and language used by the teacher make the children feel that we are not alone here the teacher is here as with us to complete the task always go around you give the task and you sit one side i am not blaming you teacher friend you not you all the teacher like i say and i'm just telling i said a hypothetical hypothetical class so here i okay i'm expecting the run to discuss and write and uh, waiting for the final product final product outcome no you be the children move from bench to bench from side to side front to back go the children you find some groups some children are not writing at all they don't even open the book at all they are not participating you go with them okay what's the problem what's here ha ah, okay shall we write first sentence how shall we start you start you make an initiation if required you write the first sentence on the blackboard yourself that's one strategy that you can do second one when you give homework homework give the task as i said earlier only the task that the child can that a child can do complete and if it's necessary before sending them from classroom you just you just give the necessary 
you know what do you say you prepare some uh, recipe you know you you cook something new right you know you are going to make a new dish new dish what a good cook a housewife or maybe i don't know who or maybe nalan or who or maybe what we do we keep all the ingredients ready we keep all the things ready for cooking similarly you whether in the classroom activity or in uh, homework homework activity you prepare prepare whatever is necessary for that discourse or that product you can give them okay these are the things now it is easy for you you can go home if you want you can ask your mother or sister something if you want you can read that book too and now go home sit relax and try to make a small list 10 sentences a small paragraph a small diary what kiran will think this day and write in his diary just write a five sentences that is second thing that he can do so slowly slowly children will develop some kind of interest in writing tasks too is it clear hello in classroom or outside or homework definitely children some children will have some they may not be some children are not interested in writing task some are not uh, interested in discussions or a task but uh, adopting simple simple strategies techniques always let the children feel we are alone the teacher is with us the teacher is with us i, I think that you can develop you can develop that kind of feeling in the children maybe in doing a, a task in the classroom okay any other question any other question and i said earlier earlier i said if they complete partially homework partially they do even in the classroom if they do complete well, they don't do it complete but only partially you appreciate it you appreciate it okay well done you wrote at least two sentences very good that's a good attempt and you repeat it you repeat what the child has constructed maybe the sentence the words that he has written and you you can make the children to clap okay give him a clap so the child gets the psychology of feeling that see my answer is taken by the teacher and it is reposted to the entire class see and he feels proud he his self esteem level is little i now okay now again he will be sitting with more interest in the next class all right any other okay sir, sir there is a question most yeah. of the students when most of the students are from hindi background the teachers promote the use of sign and language with words is it the right way to teach english uh, see such strategies of sign language and can be used but that should not be the constant strategy that we adopt you see i think i am um, father um, you are having more both english medium as well as maybe hindi medium class or maybe vernacular medium classes there right you are having both in a couple of schools uh, rest of the schools are uh, completely english medium english medium you see that's what i said earlier you can judicially judiciously use uh, your mother tongue or hindi but if you go if you go on using uh, maybe teaching english uh, using hindi i don't know uh, see uh, they should be good at hindi they should be good at english there is a hindi teacher to teach hindi right or we the children may be encountering hindi inside and outside the class so the children go home they speak hindi with their parents and family members not english the only opportunity the only opportunity they get to, they get to use and also to 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 maybe what is called to face english language in the english classroom in the english classroom if it is not an english medium classroom the child will be listening to english only uh, in the english classroom so that classroom should, should be used for giving maximum exposure in the target language exposure to the language i said in the beginning is difficult but i say i don't we don't we don't achieve this goals in one week one month but dear friends i'm teaching the same child in sixth and seventh class i am teaching the i am i am teaching the same class in 8th and 9th english say if i am i am teaching them english for 2 years the same children after 24 months if my child still cannot read simple english from the textbook if my child cannot write simple sentences there may be errors there can be errors no problem if they cannot speak or write simple sentences 
if they don't still don't follow the simple utterances simple instructions i give then what we have taught two years you come to kerala for six months you pick up malayalam malayalam if i come there in, and live there for six months i i i pick up hindi i don't become master master of the language but still i i i pick up the language see what what trick i can tell you is that just imagine okay with all love for your mother tongue with all love for your mother tongue national language and hindi just imagine you are teaching in a class in which you don't know their mother tongue i have seen some of my students practicing that they deliberately when they went to school they did not tell that uh, uh, she is a carelight and successfully she <laughs> and she made the class feel that she doesn't follow malayalam and uh, after few months see that there was no this gap between the teacher and students was bridged so just imagine you are going to a classroom you are coming to tamil nadu you are coming to karnataka and you are teaching english there you know little bit of english you know little bit of english you have the conference of teaching you know some strategies some techniques you know some technology you come to this this uh, this stage you cannot speak hindi because they don't know hindi they don't follow hindi what do we do what do we do we use all the possible all the possible strategies body language gestures sign language as you said earlier all those things but gradually gradually i think their their communication takes place between the teacher and students right okay very good thank you next i think it's time uh, to wind up even though uh, participants are eager to listen more uh, it's almost 2 and a half hours of the program yeah. uh, i would like to call upon uh, dr lena jacob the principal of uh, ngm high secondary school uh, right uh, to propose what of thanks thank you father no event can be successful without people who dedicate their resources and time to make sure everything is faultless most respected has grace dr joseph mar dinishes manager bishop of ngm group of schools resource person of the day mr ek jajan father joshi wogis dissection education officer office bearers of education board vice presidents principals and teachers as we had a very good and long interactive session of english teaching classes i would straight away enter into my responsibility and take this opportunity to thank our manager bishop respected tirumeni who is behind every growth oriented activities and in motivating and unlocking our potential to a successful life thank you bishop for this initial step taken for all the english language teachers of a group, group of institutions i would also extend my heartfelt thanks to the resource person of the day mr ek jajan for a regenerating interactive and effective session thank you so much sir for being so patient and guiding and for such a lively session thank you i would thank also you. extend i would also like to extend my thanks to father joshi wogis who never leaves any efforts for making things happen all all the goals are important having a plan of action is vital thank you father for organizing this wonderful session i would extend my heartfelt thanks to the office bearers of education board all the vice presidents principals teachers and the members of organizing committee to make this webinar happen in such a successful way at last i would like to express my heartfelt thanks to one and all again as rightly said by george elian it's never too late to be what you might have been thank you thank you ma'am uh, thank you sir once again for uh, the wonderful session we hope to have uh, again uh, later Uh, on some other occasion okay thank you father thank you thank you all the uh, respected participants i think very very, very uh, active and cooperative um, participants okay i'm so happy and thank you so much roy right. take care thank you so much sir for the information thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you sir